Uh, Professor Tang did her PhD uh, at Harvard University. And uh, before uh, joining the Grinnell College faculty, she also taught at Swarthmore College and Colgate University. Um, and she's working uh, on a book right now uh, about divorce and the representation of divorced women in early medieval China. And I'm sure we, we will all be very excited when uh, that book comes out. And Professor Tang will be talking to us today about divorce in early medieval China, uh, first to sixth century um, AD. So uh, I would like to warmly, on behalf of the School of Transnational Law, welcome Professor Tang. Uh, Professor Tang, um, over to you. And just to let our audience know, the format will be uh, Professor Tang will speak for about 40 to 45 minutes, and then we will have about 15 to 20 minutes of questions and answers. If you have a question, uh, please uh, type your question in the chat box of Zoom. Uh, and then uh, during the Q&A, um, I will uh, choose some questions from the chat box and put them to uh, Professor Tong. Uh, so you're most welcome to type in your questions in the chat box of Zoom. Um, without further ado, Professor Tong, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Norman, Professor Hall, for your kind introduction and for your invitation. And thanks also to Beijing University School of Transnational Law for the opportunity to speak to uh, this great audience. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, so I have to say uh, first thing that I'm not a legal scholar, I'm a, a scholar of literature. Um, so I may be embracing myself by speaking to this uh, uh, experts in the field. So if you are if you're an expert in the field of traditional Chinese law, this talk may not be of much use to you. Um, um, also a few words on how I got interested in this topic. So back in, in grad school, when I was deciding on a dissertation topic, that was the time when the Chinese uh, People's Supreme Court issued a new interpretation to the marriage law, which sparked a nationwide controversy. Um, many people felt that women's rights uh, were undermined uh, in the event of a divorce. Um, and then interestingly, I'm giving a talk right now, just a few days before a new change will take place, uh, take, effect, uh, take, take effect to divorce in China, namely, as some of you know, the introduction of the cooling off period of 30 days, Li Hun Ge Li Qi. Um, so this uh, new introduction will make the, the process of divorce more difficult. Thus upsets a lot of people in China. Um, uh, but now I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about the current situation in China. I will turn to the Six Dynasties period, the early medieval period, and to see how divorce was done uh, back then and what, what, how, how it felt like to be divorced um, at that period. So I'm gonna share my screen now. Share. <clears throat> uh, so the period, um, so the period I will discuss um, is roughly from the Eastern Han period to the, the end, to the beginning of the Sui Dynasty. Uh, from the first century to the sixth to the end of the sixth century, as you can tell from this pic image here, um, when the Eastern Han uh, collapsed in 220, China entered into a long period of division with only a, a brief uh, a unific unification under the Western Jin, which lasted from 265 to uh, 316. Uh, precise uh, to be precise. 280 to 316. Um, so during this long period of division, uh, many things um, uh, there were many change in the society, uh, in the social and the, and the familial uh, 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 fronts um, of uh, the lives in this period. Um, so um, that's a background to keep in mind. Um, so to understand divorce, we uh, uh, ideally we would like to have a legal code that we can go go up, uh, go by with, right? But um, the earliest extent 
com uh, a complete uh, code from traditional China is from the Tang Dynasty in the seventh century. Um, now, Tang, Tang legal code was, of course, based on the previous uh, codes issued, um, promulgated by the, uh, the, the preceding dynasties. Um, it was based on a Sui co co code, which was based on the Northern Qi court uh, in turn, which was based on the Western Jing court and the Chao Wei court, and eventually um, uh, in the Han and the Qing court. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have uh, the 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 co uh, legal courts from the Han through the Sui um, survived uh, to the day. Some fragments um, uh, do survive, but most of it were uh, were lost. Um, so what happened? Uh, 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 like how divorce was done in a period uh, before the Tang Dynasty during the, this early medieval period is what I'm trying to um, um, uh, talk today. Um, uh, so in my, uh, in my talk today, I will cover roughly these areas. I will first talk about the classical uh, prescriptions on divorce and some legal aspects, aspects of divorce that we can, uh, that were evidenced by like transmitted texts or like um, um, uh, materials excavated. Um, and I will talk about this new phenomenon during this period of division namely the two prin principal wives and how, how this phenomenon was related to the issue of divorce. And I will also touch upon the changing meanings of Yijie, breaking the bond, which is uh, codified as a, a, a cause for divorce in the Tang Dynasty. But it, um, as I will show during the Sixth Dynasty period or this early medieval period, breaking the bond was not a legal term. Um, so uh, the classical, uh, Prescription on some divorce um, um, uh, is seven. Con is called seven conditions. Qi uh, chu, which uh, which include disobedient uh, to her parents in law, unable to bear a son, licentious, jealous, having incurable diseases, uh, gossipy, and if she's um, thief. Um, if you look at these uh, seven conditions, you will find that they are actually very. Um, vague and unspecific. Um, what, do, what, does it, what, what does it mean to be disobedient? What kind of actions and speeches could be interpreted as a disobedience, for example, right? And unable to bear a son, what's the cutoff age for a woman? Right? We know in the Tang Code, uh, if, a, if a woman is 50 years or older, and if she, is, um, she can bear a son, then she may be uh, divorced on this ground. And having incurable disease, what kind of disease in, is incurable disease? Um, some scholars argue it was le leprosy, but we don't really know for sure what disease that it refers to. Um, and the case for jealousy, the charge for jealousy is most interesting to me. Like, <clears throat> you know, it was a, it was, it's listed as one of the conditions for divorce. However, like <clears throat> in the early medieval period, some some societies actually promote. Uh, female jealousy, for example. Um, I, I, uh, I find in a memorial to a Northern Wei Emperor <coughs> Shang Xiao Jing Li Biao, this, this guy Yuan Xiaoyu uh, says the, the following things. He said, people nowadays lack the standard principles. When parents marry their daughter, they teach her to be jealous. When aunts meet their niece, they urge her to be controlling. <coughs> To be able to control one's hus husband is considered a wifely virtue. To be capable of jealousy is regarded as a womanly task. Well, like in a society that promotes female jealousy uh, in, um, in practice, but like, in, I mean, they were societies in Northern Way, for example, right? But then like the classical prescription was like jealousy was a ground for divorce. Um, because like the the, uh, the classical prescriptions, the seven conditions are very vague in term. Um, um, so people in um, in reality in reality actually did, didn't really follow those uh, those um, uh, conditions, uh, seven conditions. Um, in historical records, you will see like a lot of divorce cases uh, in which like a man divorces his wife or wife for very strange reasons. Um, for example, from the Western. Han, uh, Xi Han period, there was this guy Wang Ji who divorced his wife because she fed him dates from his neighbor's tree. Uh, um, another story from the fifth century, Liu Huan um, divorced his wife because she 
dropped some dust on her mother-in-law's bed when she was drilling a hole to hang on the wall to hang shoes. Another story is about a guy called Sun Tian who divorced his wife because his cousin said she didn't take good care of him. Um, so this, these cases um, show that, you know, uh, the, uh, there was this classical prescriptions on divorce. However, in reality, divorce was done very differently. Um, in addition to the, uh, the, the seven uh, conditions for divorce, there are three pro prohibitions, san uh, chi. If a woman meets one of the three, uh, she should not be divorced. She cannot be divorced, which goes if she had no family to turn to return to when her husband was remarried, you so chu, wu so gui. If she had served three years of mourning for her parents in law, yu gong gong san nian, just some. If the husband had been poor and humble in the past, a fate she shared with him and became rich and noble now, xian ping jian hou fu gui. Again, like, I mean, except for the, the second condition. Uh, the third one is also fake too, like how, or how do you define like poor, like poor and the rich, right? Um, so in general, I feel like um, the three, the seven conditions and the three uh, prohibitions were not uh, uh, followed or were rarely followed in society. Uh, also the classic, uh, classical um, ritual text was silent on whether women had the right to divorce uh, their husbands. But in reality, we also um, see like uh, cases in which um, women initiated, initiated divorce. For example, um, you know, the famous story of Zhu Maichen, um, uh, who was a scholar from the Western Han period. And he was divorced because her, by her, her, his wife, because uh, um, the wife was fed up by the impoverished the life that she lived with him for a long time. <clears throat> and another scholar from the, um, from the seventh, fourth century uh, was divorced by his wife because um, his wife, was, uh, similarly to Zhu Maiten's uh, um, story, his wife uh, was um, tired of living a, a, a poor life with this man and she burned his books and asked for permission to marry someone else. Sometimes women would divorce their husbands due to jealousy. Um, for example, there was this lady, Lady Xi, um, was said to be very jealous when her husband took a concubine. She was uh, resentful and discontent, yuan dui, uh, yuan dui, and sent her husband a letter to break up, yu uh, shu gao jue. Um, so, um, the, the classic, uh, classical ritual text uh, prescribed conditions for divorce um, like prohibitions uh, from, from getting uh, from divorce, but they also prescribe uh, 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 the um, divorce procedure. Um, if we look at this ancient ritual of divorce uh, uh, recorded in the Li Ji record, uh, record a classic of rites, uh, uh, which goes, uh, when a feudal lord sends his wife away, she proceeds on her journey to her own state. She undertakes the journey according to rituals befitting a Lord's wife and is received there with the observance due to a Lord's wife. The messenger accompany her, then discharges his commission saying, my unworthy Lord from his want of ability was not able to follow her and take part in the services at the altars and in the, in the ancestral temple. She has therefore sent me so and so, and I venture to inform your officer appointed for this purpose of what he had done. The officer presiding on the, on the occasion replies, my unworthy Lord in his formal communication did not lay her defects before you. And he does not presume to do anything but respectfully receive your Lord's message. The officers in attendance on the commissioner then set forth the various articles sent with the lady on her marriage and those on the other side receive them. Uh, it's a very civilized um, and ideal kind of process for uh, divorce. Mm. Now, um, we know in the Han Dynasty, um, a, a very a similar but much simpler, uh, simplified version still um, uh, exist. Uh, exist. Um, according to Ban Gu's Bai Hu Tong, we are taught uh, that when a wife is divorced, she must be respect, that respectfully sent back and it should be received with the rituals befitting a guest. Um, uh, if you look at poetry, we also see like a similar uh, process was depicted in a poem 
um, um, uh, Southeast flight, Southeast East flight, the peacocks, Kongxie Dong Nanfei. One section of the, of the poem goes, out the door she went and mounted the carriage. Uh, her tears fell in more than a hundred rows. The prefectural clerk's horse, which is her husband's horse, was in the front, the young wife's carriage behind, right? This is the husband uh, seeing off, sending the wife back um, to her parents' home. Um, so judging from the temperate cited in the Shiji, that long like uh, uh, mess a passage I just read, Li Ji, uh, one of the duties of the messenger was to convey the intent of a divorce verbally. Uh, this might have been changed into a written form in later times, such as a divorce letter, along with the general um, simplification of other divorce rituals. A divorce letter prepared by the husband and signed by various parties became an official part of the divorce procedure in the Tang Dynasty. Uh, according to a statute, Tang statute issued in 737, we know that the husband in the event of a divorce has to personally prepare a divorce document. Signatures from him, his parents, his paternal uncles, his maternal uncles and aunts, her parents, her paternal uncles, her maternal uncles and aunts, their neighbors and witnesses are required. If one cannot write, one has to leave his or her fingerprints as a mark. Um, from the Dun Dunhuang cave, we actually uh, have uh, a dozen a, 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 a dozen some like divorce letters. Um, um, this one is one of the famous ones called a divorce and wife releasing letter uh, by this guy called Zhao Zhong, Zhao Zongmi. Uh, the letter is beautifully written. Um, actually, Chinese people on the internet were so taken by this letter, especially these two lines. Uh, they are marveled by the civility of people in the Tang Dynasty in the event of divorce. Um, so um, according to some uh, Han sources, a divorced woman would reclaim the dowry she brought with her at a wedding. Uh, in his commentary to the divorce process that described in the Li Ji uh, classic of rights, um, the Han Dynasty classical scholar Zheng Xuan said, statute, the divorced wife is given back what she brought, Lü, Qi, Qi, Bi, Suo, Ji. Zheng Xuan's comment indicates that it was a Han statute that women were entitled to reclaim their dowry in the event of divorce. Uh, this can be coll 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 collaborated by um, some bamboo slips from a Han tomb discovered in the Zhang, Zhang Jiashan. Um, uh, these uh, bamboo slips were produced in 186 BC or even earlier. So one of the slips, uh, slips reads, when a husband divorces his wife or when the husband, husband dies, the wife can retrieve her property and became, become a household head again. When the husband divorces his wife, she, he gives the wife her property back. Um, so the classical ritual texts did not mention whether the divorced wife had to pay back the betrothed so gifts her family had received, but returning uh, these gifts seems to be practiced in later times. Uh, we find in, in po po poetry some evidence, which I will not go into uh, in the inches of time. Um, so, um, of course, women were impacted by divorce. Uh, ritually speaking, she may not she may receive reduced or no money at all from her son. Uh, her her parents certainly received will receive no money from her son. Now, in a traditional uh, Confucian society, and that is China, this is a serious matter. Legally speaking, she would not be punished for the crime her husband or anyone in his family committed if the divorce was complete, completed before the crime was discovered. Um, and also she had the right, as I said, to claim her private property, which not only include the dowry, but also the property she inherited from her first family prior, prior to the marriage. Thirdly, the son of a divorced uh, woman would lose the qualification to inherit the family in, to inherit the family property if her his father had sons from his second principal wife. 
Financially speaking, a divorced woman could lose her source of support if her birth family was unable or unwilling to provide for her. But if she had nowhere to go after divorce, she could exempt from divorce according to the three prohibition, pro prohibitions. Um, so another slip from the Zhang Jiashan Han Jian, Zhang Jiashan Han bamboo slips uh, stated that the son of a divorced wife is not allowed to compete with the son of the succeeding wife to be the heir of their father. So the impact on, of divorce is not only just for on the woman herself, but, as, but also for her sons. Uh, even though uh, Ban Zhao, um, in her admoni uh, admonitions for her, my daughter's Yu Jie, spoke of how she fe feared that a divorce might disgrace her birth family, the strong social stigma placed on divorced women that's seen in the later imperial or even modern times was yet to be felt in the early medieval period. A divorced woman could be just as desirable as a maiden in the marriage market. In other words, being divorced alone did not necessarily, necessarily de de pre uh, depreciate a woman's value as a potential marriage candidate. Um, now I will move on to talk about the phenomenon of Liang Di, two principal wives, and also the ground for divorce, uh, a new ground for divorce, uh, breaking the bond each year. Before I do that, I will just uh, quickly remind you of this uh, chronology that we that's under discussion. Um, so we are talking about the period, um, the early medieval period. As I said uh, earlier, uh, this period is characterized by constant war, um, warfare, and also the division between, uh, of China uh, between North and South mostly. Um, so uh, during this period of time, a situation occurred in which a man kept two women as his principal wives, Liang Di. So this, this, this phenomenon became like noticeable toward the end of the Eastern Han period when the empire suffered a continuous warfare waged by warlords. Um, um, this phenomenon um, uh, posed great challenges to the orthodox uh, ritual system and raised a series of um, social and political issues, not the least of which was the issue of inheritance, since only the son by a principal wife um, would have the right to inherit his father's official title. Now this, this phenomenon Liang Di triggered the heated debates in court as, as well as in society. At the core of these debates was the question of how to define the status of the two women and what constitute a divorce. So there are many, um, not many, there are a few courses for, uh, causes for a Liang Di situation. Uh, the most uh, important cause is the social mobility brought about by war because during, um, uh, during wartime, people move uh, between rival regimes or like um, from place to place more frequently than the peaceful time. Uh, and imperial bestowing of wives on married subject could be, could be cause for a Liang Di situation, as well as avoidance of legal collective responsibilities. There are two solutions to this uh, dilemma. One is to set up a separate uh, residence for one of the wives and her children. The other is to register both women as one's principal wife with the government and have them live under the same roof with the uh, husband. Now, uh, a regional uh, difference is observed. Um, the second method is only seen um, practiced in the South and the first is seen practiced throughout China. Uh, this may have to do, so, may have something to do with the different attitudes toward concubinage uh, in between the Northerners and the Southerners during this period of time. Um, Liang Di, this, uh, this uh, phenomenon is, uh, is related to divorce because um, in the debates of Liang Di, how to define the marital status of the two wives is, um, is a central question. And the, 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 from the debates, we can tell that the definition of divorce is actually very ambiguous in the early medieval period. Um, and these discussions and debates on Liang Di reveal to us that the understanding of what constitutes a divorce underwent some change during this period of time. 
Uh, during those debates, some scholars, some scholar officials argued that physical separation be considered uh, uh, as a legitimate reason for divorce. Up to this period, the, the, the only um, conditions for divorce are the seven, um, the qi chu, the seven ones that I, uh, I laid out at the beginning of the talk. Moreover, physical separation caused by geopolitical reasons uh, seems to have justified women's divorcing their husbands. As I said, women divorcing their husbands uh, were practiced in society, but never in the history of China was such a um, 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 was this theorized, uh, uh, you know, by uh, officials. <clears throat> So Liang Di cases uh, experienced a surge in the third century, understandably so because uh, third century is the, the, the century of the three kingdoms period uh, um, for the most part. Um, when the Han Empire uh, dissolved in 220, China entered into this period of division among the three uh, kingdoms. Um, and this situation was ended only in 280. So uh, there were six, six recorded cases from this period that received a lot of attention from officials. Um, two such cases resulted from cross-regional travels between rival states, um, and two result, resulted from political searches of Taiwan officials by Sima, uh, Sima Shi, and one resulted from the Western Jing uh, imperial bestower of a wife on a defected uh, Wu subject and the circumstance of the last Liang Di case, um, that of Cheng Liang's remains un unclear. Um, in one of the discussions of another Liang Di case from the early fourth century, uh, an official said there, ha there have been many cases like this since war and turmoil bro broke out at the end of the third century. So the Cheng Liang case, um, I, will, I, will, I will show it to you now because um, in the next slide, I will show how this case inspired uh, a discussion, a, a di discussion on a, hy a hypothetical Liang Di case. So uh, in this case, this uh, Cheng Liang is a, a governor. Um, we know that he, ha he already had a wife, later he married again, whereupon he established both, his, both as his principal wives. After the first wife died, his son from, from the second wife was confused about the correct, correct mourning rituals for his father's first wife. So Cheng Liang um, uh, requested a discussion from the government on how to, uh, how, how to mourn his first wife by his son. So as I said, this, this real uh, um, uh, Liang Di case inspired a hypothetical Liang Di scenario, which Zhang Hua uh, designed to solicit opinions from his colleagues. So this case uh, sounds very similar to the previous Liang Di case, which goes X take, first take, take, took Y as his wife and later took Z as his wife and concealed the existence y, of Y from Z. He acted as if both, both women were principal wives and there was no hierarchical difference between them. How could the son of Z observe the, the morning rituals for Y after Y died? The fact was that both wives were regarded equal and no distinction was made between a principal wife and a concubine. Although having two principal wives was not, not right, the mistake was made by the father. How could a son arbitrarily make his own mother distant, distant from his father by performing uh, mourning rituals to Y that were appropriate to a principal wife? How, however, if the son offered mourning rituals to Y as a concubine, this would contradict the reality. I'm confused how, how she won't go about this. So uh, six people involved in this, um, were engaged in this uh, debate and three of them um, on the, in group one uh, uh, argue that it was a mistake made by the father. The sons should not correct it and should observe three years, three year mourning rituals for each other's mother. So they all endorsed the coexistence of two principal wives. However, the other group, um, um, argue that a distinction between these two women needed to be made. 
um, and they propose that the first who entered the household should be regarded as the principal wife, the second, the concubine. Xian zhi wei di, hou zhi wei shu. So they, are, they, are, they, they try to adhere to the ancient warnings against having liang, liang di, two principal wives. And they basically uh, degraded the second wife to be to the status of a concubine. Now we know there was a huge difference between a, a principal wife and a, a concubine. Um, but all the, uh, the participants of this debate agreed that the first wife should be considered as a principal wife. A few years later, in 280, another Liangdi case was brought to the uh, attention of the emperor. Um, in this case, <clears throat> There was a man called Wang Bi from Changsha. At the end of the Han Dynasty, uh, around 220, went on a business trip to the north. And then like after he arrived in the north, the Han Dynasty uh, was ended. So he was uh, stuck in the north. Uh, now the north uh, become north, uh, Cao Wei Dynasty. So he served in the Cao Wei court and married a woman there, uh, a northern woman and then had a son with the, his second wife uh, called Wang Chang. Um, and he was separate from his first wife, Xi. Um, in 280, when uh, the, 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 his home state, Wu, was uh, subjugated by the, by, the, by the Western Jing, um, his son from the second wife heard that his formal mother, which is which means his father's first wife from the south had long been dead and, and asked for a discussion of her status so that he could observe the right um, um, morning rituals to, uh, for her. Um, so um, this debate is uh, indeed a very large, a, a large scale debate. More than 20 uh, high ranking officials were participated but interestingly, compared to the first debate, we just uh, I just went um, over, only three of the more than 20 officials agreed that the first wife, she should be considered a principal wife and should receive three year mourning uh, from Wang Chang, the son by the man's second wife. Um, and the, more, the rest 20 some officials all argued that the first wife should first wife should be regarded as a divorced wife. Um, they have two lines of arguments. One is from the legal perspective. The other is from the political perspective. Uh, what's interesting to us is the legal argument here. So some um, participants argued for new grounds of divorce, new grounds for divorce, um, uh, such as Dijie, divorce by uh, due to physical separation. Zijue, divorce due to perceived death of one's spouse and divorce due to imperial law. Um, some argue that when couples are separated, there was no reason for them to remain married. Some argue that when a husband remain, uh, with the moment when husband, the husband remarries is the moment when his former, former wife is divorced. Some argue that physical separation should allow divorce and the remarriage of both husband and wife. And some argue if the husband remarries, um, he already considered his first wife dead, even though no official divorce was made. And some simply said a, a former wife should be considered divorced no matter what. Um, so compared to the first debate, um, 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 called for by Zhang Hua, uh, the difference is like the majority of the people participated in this debate argue for the, the status of the first wife to be a divorced wife. Um, now, uh, clearly there was uh, some political um, um, context um, in which uh, these participants argue for uh, to, to regard the first wife as um, a divorced wife because that's the only uh, case where I see the, um, you know, the first wife is um, uh, degraded as a, a divorced wife in the debates of uh, Liang Di cases. I will not go into the political context uh, here, but the takeaway from uh, this debate is that new grounds for divorce were proposed. Um, Yi Jue, uh, for the first time was used in the context of a divorce. Uh, 
and 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 according to one of the debate participants, EJ refers to the seven conditions. Um, EJ breaking the bond, <clears throat> and then also in this debate, um, we see theoretically women were given the right to divorce men because one of them argued that physical separation should allow divorce and remarriage of not only the men but also the women. And then one participant also proposed the length of physical separation, which should be more than five months. Um, so the emperor who called for this debate uh, uh, gave his final verdict. And he, he, he agreed that physical separation is a legi legitimate uh, reason for divorce. Since uh, the first wife was regarded as divorced, then this is not a Liangdi dilemma anymore. Um, so let's talk about uh, yi jie, uh, breaking the bond a little bit. So yi jie literally means breaking a bond due to one party's violation of some principles, yi jie. Uh, it can happen to any relationship. It can happen between a ruler and his subject, Jin Chen. Uh, can happen between a husband and wife or among friends. Um, so um, I, I give you two citations. Um, so the first one says, the way between a ruler and his minister is subject to the principles of union and separation. Jin Chen zhi dao you he li zhi yi. And then another citation goes, the conjugal relation includes the principles of separation and the union. Fu fu zhi dao yi you li he. So yi jie could happen to uh, Jin Chen, minister, ruler and minister, or um, hu uh, husband and wife. And it can also happen to other relations. Uh, the early medieval usage of yi jie um, that I could find, the first two cases apply to a relationship between husband and wife. The third case uh, um, uh, concerns a relationship between a nephew and uh, his aunt. And the, the fourth is a relationship between a woman and her in-laws. When the bond between these relationships in these relationships were broken, it's, it, can, it could call yi jie. Clearly, yi jie did not become, it was not a legal term in early medieval period and did not become a legal ground for divorce until it was uh, codified in the Tang law. But its provenance um, can be traced back to the Han dynasty and its, its development in the long period uh, between the Han and Tang. So in the Han dynasty, according, again, according to Ban Gu's Bai Hu Tong, you know, uh, this is an interesting passage. So if a husband is wicked to his wife, she should not leave him. This is because there was no such a thing as earth uh, leaving heaven. Heaven, husband is compared to heaven, uh, wife is compared to earth. This is why even if the husband is wicked, wicked the wife cannot leave him. However, if the husband upsets human relations and kills his parents-in-law, then he has given up on the law, which is a grave cause for chaos. Only under this circumstance, when the bond was broken, can the wife leave him. As I said earlier that the classical ritual text did not say anything about the wife's uh, rights to <clears throat> divorce husbands. Uh, but this is the first time that we see, that, you know, under this extreme condition, uh, the wife had the right to um, divorce uh, her, her husband. Um, in the Tang Dynasty, we know yi jie, breaking the bond, uh, is defined as a legal cause for divorce in addition to seven conditions. So qi chu and yi jie are two different causes for two different categories for divorce. And yi jie is defined specifically um, as husband beating or killing the wife's uh, family members or the family fa family members of the husbands and wife husband and wife kill each other, or the wife beats or curses or kills or wounds uh, her husband's family members, or there was illicit illicit sexual intercourse um took place take, taking place in among family members, or the wife attempts to harm the husband. These are the conditions for breaking the bond. When any of this happens, a divorce is uh, mandatory. Um, so we, uh, as, as you can tell, like Egypt breaking the bond uh, started with just um, expression for uh, a bond, uh, any bond broken due to one party's violation of uh, some principles. But gradually, um, it was um, 
uh, it was uh, incorporated into the legal um, legal context and become a legal uh, ground for divorce in the Tang Dynasty. Um, I, I suspect that there was no hard evidence for me to propose this, but I suspect the discussions and debates on, on Biang Di, two principal wives, uh, was one of the occasions where uh, the, the term Yi Jie was gradually being incorporated into the legal uh, discourse. So to conclude, I will say, um, uh, divorce was a common phenomenon in the early medieval period. It took place at all levels of the society and could be initiated by both men and women. Uh, reasons for divorce varied greatly from one case to another. The seven conditions were sometimes evoked or implied, but many divorce cases had no direct relation to the classical prescriptions on divorce. Men might divorce women for reasons such as career advancement, political opportuni uh, opportunism, or financial improvement. Women might, women might divorce men for a better material life or a better uh, marriage companion. Due to the period from the end of Han Empire to the unification of China under the Sui, the unstable social and political environments propelled the emergence, emergence of some new phenomenon uh, in social and familial lives the two principal wives anomaly was one of the new situations in marriage, um, in marriage life, and was a special case for divorce. In the debates on Liang Di situations, new grounds for debate, new grounds for divorce were proposed. The right for female to initiate divorce was suggested under the Tang Code. Codification of divorce were greatly ex expanded, resulting from cha changes and revisions made in the pre preceding uh, centuries. Um, that's it, I will stop here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Tang, for that uh, very um, interesting and thorough uh, discussion. Um, I was especially struck, uh, um, you know, one might argue that uh, the divorce and the perception of divorced women in the early medieval period. So what is that? That's now what? The, uh, I'm terrible at, at math, but what, 15, 1600 years ago? They probably are a bit more progressive <laughs> then, uh, than um, uh, China today. But, but anyway, that, that's sort of just an offhand, um, in terms of perception of divorced women, that's sort of just an offhand comment. But um, we now have a uh, time for um, um, questions. And uh, uh, so uh, feel free to submit your questions by chat, or if, if you would like to ask a question um, on video, uh, please do so. Uh, Professor Tang, I see we have one question that came in uh, on chat a few minutes ago. So why don't we start with that one? Mm -hmm. um, this uh, participant uh, asked, um, Uh, basically asking about religion or religious attitudes um, at the time. Um, I think it's a it's a broader question because you mentioned um, uh, you mentioned that the social stigma uh, attached to divorced women. We don't have much evidence of that social stigma in the in the period you're discussing. That comes later in the later imperial era. And so I, I think this question is basically asking, you know, what, what exactly led to that social stigma? Were, was it uh, certain religious attitudes? Was it philosophical changes or um, intellectual changes? I, uh, this is a very good question. Thank you for, for asking this. I, I think um, this social step, even in the Tang Dynasty, I feel like we didn't really see the kind of uh, stigma that women experienced, divorced women experienced. Um, I think maybe it has to do with this new, conf new confusion, new confusion kind of um, idea on womanhood, or like you know, um, um, later in the in in the in the late imperial period. Um, you know, yeah. women had to observe like uh, widow chastity, that sort of thing. You know, uh, fidelity to one uh, husband, fidelity to one husband. Uh, this the the idea of fidelity to one's husband was it has always been in 
there, like it was prescribed in the classical ritual texts as well, as well. But uh, seems like early medieval period, uh, during that period of time, women didn't really follow uh, that very much. So, so that's that's why I said um, I, I don't really observe the kind of social stigma that we see often uh, women often experience at later times. I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, so we took one question from chat. Does anybody want to ask a question over video? Okay, Professor uh, Snyder, um, go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I can. Yes. Uh, Professor Tang, thank you very much for your very interesting presentation. I should say I'm not a an expert in this field at all, <clears throat> but I have two questions. First one. You present. You presented the divorce uh, patterns and so on, very much as uh, individual to individual, with some references to the families. Uh, and I would like to know more about the, whether this was clan to clan transaction, and the role of marriage and divorce in the wider social relationships, because from what I have read. Uh, this was extremely important, and not only in China, but in many other, uh, many other parts of the world, even, even today, of course. Uh, the second question, if I may, uh, yeah. is um, about the institutional structure. Uh, you mentioned the codes. Uh, I, as I recall, the codes in China at that time were not at all like the codes we have today. In uh, in so-called civil law system, so I would like to know something about the institutional structure, in the sense of which institutions were involved in absorbing and recognizing uh, changes in the rules, um, and uh, that that's the main gist of my question about the institutional structure outside the parties. You gave some ideas about this, but I would like to learn a little bit more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for your questions. Uh, to answer the first one, uh, it's definitely, if I give you the impression that uh, divorce was um, an individual uh, matter, that I didn't do a good job. Uh, marriage and divorce were the business of two clans, two families. It was never a, a, the business of two individuals. Mm, and that's why, like, you know, in the case of a divorce, um, signatures from the family members on both sides were involved, were given, um, and it's sometimes even neighbors' uh, uh, signatures um, were required. So it's really a communal event, not an individual event. Um, uh, to answer your second qu question, Divorce, um, uh, like civil ma matters such as marriage and divorce, marriage and divorce dis disputes uh, were handled by magistrates, which who were uh, appointed by the emperor. Um, so it, it is dif different from the, the Western uh, legal system where like uh, two parties um, present their evidence to a judge and then the judge uh, make a ruling. Um, I think in China, uh, in the Chinese tradition, um, the, 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 the regional mag magistrate, the local magistrate was the one who handled uh, the, the, the disputes and there was no hearing, I don't think, um, involved. Um, so it is different from the Western um, tradition, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um... I'll continue uh, just basically uh, in the interest of fairness, just write down the chat. So whoever has the uh, question earlier. So the next question we have is, um, uh, Professor Tang, you mentioned that there were some regional differences uh, between North and South in the practice of Liangdi. And uh, this participant was curious if uh, you have observed any regional differences between North and South uh, in, in divorce practices generally uh, from the texts? Um, uh, it's a very good question. 
There is certainly reach, regional difference between northerners and southerners in all areas of uh, uh, of um, in all areas in politics, in culture, in family life. Um, in terms of divorce, um, I think um, the southerners, when they are confronted with a liang di dilemma, they tend to like find a solution that's agreeable to everyone involved. Um, that's why like the practice of having both wives registered as uh, principal wives with the government was only seen in the South. Um, but in the North, I think people were much more concerned with the ox, ox, orthodox idea of uh, uh, status, the status, right? A woman should be a principal wife uh, because a concubine is very lowly, um, um, you know. Um, um, so like no one wants to be a concubine. So if two women are found in a Liangdi situation, they and also their respective children will fight and will uh, like file legal um, uh, suits over and over again to fight for their mother's uh, status for um, as a principal wife. Um, so in, <laughs> in that case, like, you know, it's a much more kind of um, uh, con 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 confrontational um, uh, between the family members of the two women, um, uh, between the two women. So I think um, um, another thing is like, I think um, in the South people generally, were, I think people were more okay with concubines uh, and sons born of concubines will have a fair chance to, to succeed in society. But, but in the North, if a man was born by a concubine, and his career will be ruined no matter how talented he 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 is. That's why it's a very it's a life and death kind of um, situation for people in the north. Um, um, you know, if they're confronted with a Liang Di situation, they had to fight uh, um, rigorously. Yeah. So I think there are certainly like regional differences to the um, in the, in this matter. Um, then the next uh, question on chat uh, asks about. Um, uh, uh, and so this uh, seminar participant asks, um, I guess just for more details about uh, Idria and the consideration of Idria. So uh, if a divorce is um, under a Idria ground, if a husband kills his parents-in-law, his wife has a right to divorce her husband. But if a husband beats or curses his wife, um, uh, can the wife be justified to divorce her husband? Is there any um, any uh, way for her to um, divorce her husband in that ground? Any sources uh, tell us anything about that? Um, during the period that I studied, the early medieval period, yes. I don't think the woman had the right to divorce her husband, even if her husband um, um, scolded or, or beat her family members. Actually, there was a story from the Han Dynasty um, that tells, uh, so there was a lawsuit from the Han Dynasty that concerns, concerns this couple. So the wife was sentenced to a commuted, commuted death for slapping on her, her mother-in-law's face because her husband beat her alcoholic father for asking money from the, her husband. And so the judge ruled, uh, he said, well, um, you know, the, your husband um, beat your father. It's not insignated by his mother. Why did you slap her on her face? So you should be punished by a commuted death penalty. Uh, well, in this ruling, interestingly, um, the husband was not punished, uh, was not penalized for his action. The wife was punished. Uh, but then like, if, if we consider this case in a Tang Dynasty, then a, a compulsory divorce will be required because that violated the ground for divorce, which is breaking the, uh, the bond each year, right? But in the previous dynasties, I don't think that was the case. Um, you know, what women cannot divorce their husband if um, he, um, you know, uh, violate her family members. So I suppose uh, uh, she didn't have the grounds to divorce if the husband violated her family members. So what if he violated her, insulted her, or beat her, or? I don't think you. Uh, she could. I don't think she could divorce, uh, divorce her. Either. I mean, I. 
<laughs> she would divorce her or him in reality. You know, I think when it comes to divorce, women have power if they came from good family, had the support from their family, then they could like they can be very overbearing. Uh, they could be very exceed exceedingly jealous. There are so many stories about jealous women of this period. Um, they could like really, you know, um, overpower their husbands, um, and they could definitely divorce them. But that, but that's not prescribed in the legal, uh, the, the ritual um, texts. Well, thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're we're out of time, uh, and so I apologize to those participants uh, who asked questions in the chat box. And unfortunately, we're out of time; we can't get to them. But um, uh, please, uh, woman, can you like? capture the, the, the question so I could look at it uh, later. Sure. The question uh, I haven't got to answer. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'll just, uh, let me just copy paste that now because I think Zoom will, um, when this is over, it tends to, okay, I've copied and pasted it. I'll send that to you later. But um, uh, please you. join me. Uh, please join me in thanking Professor Tong for a very stimulating and uh, thorough presentation. And um, thank you all for uh, also, uh, your participation and your support of the seminar series. I also want to thank our uh, staff member, uh, Ms. Carrie Tan, who is here on screen for her assistance and uh, all of the administrative and technical Zoom aspects uh, for the seminar. So thank you, Professor Tong, and thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to the talk. Have a good evening.